Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to today's Art Hunter. My guest today is a producer, singer-songwriter, performer, very edgy with, uh, with music and which is fantastic. Um, debuting three tracks on SoundCloud at the age of 15, wow. Uh, championed by Triple J and supported international artists on tour many times. Apart from the singing career, uh, has starred in a, a doco called uh, Weather uh, Diaries, uh, and which is all about c climate change, uh, which is, we'll talk about that a little bit to later. Uh, this electropop uh, artist's uh, music is very creative, pushing the boundaries of pop music, which goes hand in hand with the amazing videos uh, so welcome to the Art Hunter. Thank you so much for having me. That's my pleasure. And so Imogen is your name. Yes. But yeah. you go, your stage name is? Looper J, yeah. Right. And why, why Looper J? Because there's a lot of little story there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. So um, Lupa in Latin means she-wolf. And yeah. um, growing up, <laughs> well, when I was six, I watched um, the Studio Ghibli film Princess Mononoke, which is, if you don't know, about a... Um, a girl raised by wolves um, who like fights against uh, this town of humans that are like slowly killing the forest that her and all the animals <laughs> live in basically and I was really really obsessed with this character right. um, because mainly because she was really really fierce and not very you know like feminine um, and I think that at that age when you know that was like 2003 there weren't any like female role models in mainstream media who were not very, you know, like princesses, like really beautiful, stereotypical, like ideals of femininity. And yeah. I think I just really connected with this character. And um, I dressed up as her for like oh, wow. four or five years. I wore the costume wow. everywhere. <laughs> All right. How old were you when you were doing this? Um, between six and 10. Right. I mean, <laughs> say that that's pretty ballsy, you know, like sort of having that, um, <laughs> You know, like real, and, and what, what, what did your parents say? What, did they, um, they, they were cool about it? Yeah, they, my mum was very happy to, she made me the costume. Fantastic. <laughs> we went to Spotlight together and bought this like wolf, white wolf fur. Oh, fantastic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they just sort of let me be a kind of oddball kid. Um, but your, your mother was, is also involved in the, the docker that you made, wasn't she? Oh, she, she? made, she made. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My mum made this film actually about climate change that um, she says was kind of partially inspired because of my like really huge obsession with this film. And and I should say now like the film, even though it's like an animation, it's a really adult kind of film because it, it's it's essentially about like an extinction that happens and um, it's it's quite sad. Like the forest kind of gets wiped out in a way. So it's a very kind of full-on film for a kid to be obsessed with. And so it kind of got her thinking about climate change a lot and what it's like to be raising a kid like me in a world that's really affected by climate change. And so she made this personal documentary um, about her own feelings about climate change and interviewing um, kind of, like keeping it the focus very local rather than, because a lot of films about climate change are very scientific and, you know, pull out all these facts about how quickly everything's deteriorating. Yeah. And I think she wanted to keep it really like local and interview people who are thinking about it in different ways um, about the changes they're seeing. She interviewed people who care for flying foxes because yeah. the flying fox population in Sydney has been kind of really, tr like treated really bad. Like they've been pushed out of the botanical gardens where they were. Because they are eating too much of the vegetation. The yeah, they? yeah, yeah. But, um, the reason they're in cities in the first place is because um, well, their habitat's habitat. being killed everywhere yeah. else. Yeah. And so them getting pushed out of the city is also really bad yeah. for them. And so my mum was interviewing these carers for flying foxes, as well as people um, that were doing experiments with putting uh, gum trees in really, really hot climates and seeing what happens to them to right. see what will happen to our forests. Yeah. Um, and she also filmed me. <laughs> Yay! Um, yeah, when I was doing my final years of high school and kind of the focus on me was to get a sense of like how I guess schooling really 
pushes uh, people of my generation to just focus on their careers. And it's really hard when you're doing school to like really be thinking about the state of the world as well and, and climate change and everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But, but it's all part of growing up a bit, isn't it? The way you, um, uh, you know, like uh, y your brain has to develop to start thinking along those lines too, doesn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, it's a funny thing for me because I, because I was really into this film, Princess Mononoke, I really cared about animals. Fantastic. And, and yeah, I kind of, when I was a little kid, I thought I would probably end up being like a wildlife photographer or like a wildlife activist in some kind of way. Um, but when I hit high school and I went to a classical music high school, it was very, very high pressure. Um, around like 13 or 14, I kind of, it was like school was really intense and the social stuff at school was really intense that um, I was distracted from my like love for the environment and for, you know, wolves <laughs> and, and stuff. And I kind of, yeah, went through a weird period at school where I got disconnected from my passions a bit and right. kind of was returning figuring out who I was again and what I loved and everything later. And that's when I made this project. Right. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, it's funny that like, I, I actually really did care about the environment and I had a lot of like emotion about it as a kid. And then I think schooling made me a bit numb to it. Mm. And yeah, that's what mom was, my mum was sort of looking at in the right. film. Yeah. Okay. Um, so music, where, where did, when did that come into your life and why? Um, when I was also around six, I started playing violin just because I, I was at like a public school and they had like a little, um, a very small like violin group. <laughs> and it was really just because like my friend at the time was put in this violin group and I wanted to be with my friend. That's all it was. <laughs> but I very quickly realized I really liked violin. Excellent. And um, my mom has said to me, I don't really remember, but apparently I was coming home saying, it's too easy at school. Like the teacher says the same things over and over. And so mom said, do you want to go to a, a proper teacher, um, like a solo teacher? And um, I did. And then kind of just from that age, cause I had a really, really great teacher who played in the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. Um, she kind of took it very seriously and took me very seriously. And um, from, the age of about six to 15, I just thought I would be a violinist, like right. a classical violinist right. was my career. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, when I was about 15, um, I guess because all the music I actually listened to, even though I played violin and played in orchestras and really loved that, the music I listened to was not classical music. It was like folk music or, yeah, singer-songwriters primarily. Um, like. Sarah Blasco and Florence and the Machine yep. and Regina Spector were artists I loved when I was like 13, 14, um, and Laura Marling. And then a friend of mine uh, who came to our school in uh, year 10 when I was 15 showed me Grimes, who is like, um, if you don't know, like a, a self-produced, like very, very electronic musician. And, and it was my first introduction to electronic music. And I just like immediately fell in love and had never expected to like it, but I think like seeing this artist Grimes yep. do it and do it all herself and make everything herself just in her bedroom um, made me think, oh, I could do that. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. you, you had one up because you, you had actually been studying music as well. Yeah. So therefore you had that real understanding of it too. Yeah, I think that's really, really helped. Like, mm. I don't really practice violin anymore. No, no, no. It no. got really But kind you of, can read music. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it like, I'm grateful to having that intensive sort of upbringing yeah. with it, even though it was kind of difficult in some ways. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Oh, for well, sure. well, it's yeah. that, uh, you know, it's a real discipline, isn't it, when you study yes. classical music? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the fact is you can read music, and electronic um, artists a lot of the time don't know how to read music. So, you know, like, it's um, beneficial for you in so for many sure. ways, you know, like, yeah. and, and, and would also help with. Um, you know, like realizing that you know, like it, it has to follow a tune, and and yeah. you know, like and what it means to for this to follow that um, would would must be exciting for you. Yeah, it definitely helps with the the writing element of it, and yeah. And how do you go with the lyrics? Do you enjoy writing lyrics? Yeah, that's sort of been another thing that I've always been into 
from a young age, like like writing. I used to also think maybe I'd be like a storyteller of yeah. some kind. Um, well, songwriting is storytelling. Well, yeah, I, n I, I guess I never, you know, as a kid, I never saw myself as a singer. Which, so it's kind of funny that I've ended up here doing this. But yeah, I guess I realized late high school that I can combine this sort of writing thing I like with, with songs and it's just sort of really worked <laughs> for me. Um, yeah, I really like the lyrical side of it because I, I was really into poetry towards the end of school. Um, and so when I write songs, I often have like been writing them out, at, like the lyrics out kind of like poetry first. And then I, or I take like ideas that are like poems and then shape them to melodies and change them later. But yeah, it's sort of quite an important part. Right, for yeah. And, uh, and a lot, lot of electronic um, artists don't know how to uh, to write lyrics as well. So you know, like if, <laughs> if you're into poetry and stuff, that's um, that's a plus yeah. as well. Yeah, I guess it is a kind of funny crossover. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. And are you happy the um, the path you've taken? You know, or what what you're doing with your music is that you realise now? Yes, this is what I want to do. I'm doing, and you've moved from Sydney to to Melbourne, yeah, uh, because of the love of music and Melbourne being a big music city. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'd say I, the more I kind of go on with doing this, the more I sort of feel like this is this is the thing I love, and um, you know. I naturally, it's not even that I want to do it now, it's sort of like I need to do it. <laughs> like I, um, I, I do, my songs are really, really personal and I kind of have to do it to, not have to, but like it, it really, I have quite a drive to do it to process what I'm thinking about and like what I'm feeling and stuff. So um, yeah, I do love it and feel like it's definitely what I want to be doing for as long as possible. Mm. Um, and yes, moved here because the the sort of music scene here, especially in the electronic music scene, um, it's it's a lot. There's a lot more going on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, actually, the Sydney music scene is great as well, and there are some really oh, fantastic artists. Absolutely, there. every it's city has difficult. good a, a good music scene. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just been difficult because of the lockout laws. Yeah, um, well, that's changed now, ago. though, hasn't it? It's, yeah. yeah, it's getting back a bit. Yeah. But then on the on the other side is your videos, a real <laughs> art form. So congratulations there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and how how involved are you in? You know, like, um, or do you, you actually get a director in that says, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, or do you get very involved in it? I am very involved, yes. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a control freak, if you put it negatively. No. Um, but I've but just that's, been... <laughs> that, that's not a problem. <laughs> no, I've just been doing I've just been doing all of the elements since I, since I was 15, because I have also just... I was also kind of editing videos for fun before I started this project, and... Um, yeah, my mum's a filmmaker. I don't know if it's a genetic thing. She never taught me, but I just sort of ended up doing it as well. Um, and so, yeah, when I made my first song, I sort of was like, I have to do a music video with it too. And I shot it myself and like edited it on like Windows Movie Maker. And then mum, because she's an editor as well, like um, showed me Final Cut Pro. And so sort of since the beginning, I've been editing my own, pretty much all my own videos I've edited. Um, I have at different points had directors um, work with me. More recently though, what I found works really well for me is um, I'm kind of directing, so I come up with the, like, the narrative and the outline and everything. And then I work with a cinematographer or they kind of take on like a co-directing cinematography role as well. Right. I've been working with Nissa Mitchell recently, who um, I'm doing a video with actually in this theater soon. Um, and yeah, she kind of like works out um, how to make my ideas possible in terms of like filming and lighting and yeah. all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Over your shoulder, there's an image of you and so many people, the minute I saw it, uh, I knew exactly wh where you got the concept from. Yep. It's from the, a movie called American Beauty yeah. uh, and it's you laying on a, um, a bed of roses <laughs> with rose petals, which, which in the the movie they were falling from the the heavens. So it was a dream sequence. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm surprised that you would have been aware of that, and, oh, really? and you yeah. used it. You know, like, yeah. So we, did it always impress you that when you saw the film? Um, yeah, I was. I saw it actually like it in hindsight, like an age that maybe is like a little young for it. 
not like a little young. I was 14 when I watched it. And I feel like I was, I loved it then and was blown away, but I've rewatched it since and sort of as I've become more mature and emotionally sort of intelligent and stuff, I feel like I've understood like the whole thing a little bit better. And, um, but yeah, I think it's a really great film. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and you know, like the the girl that he was dreaming about would would have been r- somebody around your age when you said yes. fourteen. <laughs> um, may, yeah, maybe she might have been exactly. fifteen, sixteen. No, so fully. so yeah. you know, like you thought you were seeing it young, but you know, like it was a, a pretty weird dream sequence. But yeah. also, do you remember in it? And it's one of my favourite bits where there's that plastic bag. Yes. You know, <laughs> and uh, and he's filming this plastic bag in a yeah. you know, like uh, the wind catching it. I yeah. love that scene. Yeah. As well. Well, it's a yeah. really beautiful film. Yeah, yeah. it also. is a very, yeah. very clever, clever film. And then one of the other uh, videos I've, I've seen of yours where all of a sudden your face is all being painted yes. in a flower. Uh, t- tell us, where did the inspiration come for that one? Well, that's actually one that someone else directed. Um, I kind of like explained to her what um, the song was about and stuff. And she and we had I had a vague idea of how it could work and she sort of went, well, I think if we do it with paint, um, the sort of concept of the song can come across like that. And that, that was all her idea. Right. Um, yeah, so that sort of song, it's called This Suburb and the lyrics are, there are some lines in it um, about feeling like I've become enmeshed with a, a place, a house and a relationship essentially, but it's talking about um, feeling like I've become inseparable from like a, a place um, and so she was saying why don't we do that with paint so I like get completely blended into this wall behind me with paint visually yeah, yeah. Um, and you you work re- really well with the, the way you um, your, your images behind us and they'll be coming up on on the screen as we speak mm-hmm. is that you know like you have got you know, like there, there is a real art form in you as a canvas. <laughs> Have you ever looked at it that way? What do you mean? Uh, you know, like that you're a canvas with yes. you know, like, or your hair color. Even, even yeah. now with your, your hairstyle today and, yeah. um, and, you, and your piercing and stuff that you know, like you're using yourself as, as a canvas. Completely, yeah. No, I think that's a great way to think about it. And that's, I guess, something I've kind of, yeah, really gotten into in the last like, few years just sort of really experimenting with how I can present myself um, and you know how far I can take that I recently dressed up in drag for a video <laughs> um, which for me is sort I, of like, I, I, I know that one yeah yeah like which a is... bit out there because I don't like being that feminine looking and so it was sort of like a, a whole thing conceptually for me to get into a like wedding dress kind of thing and, like <laughs> have long hair and um, did it freak you out though when you looked in the mirror and go yikes <laughs> <laughs> it did but I kind of warmed myself up to the concept like it's something I would not have done two years ago because it would have weirded me out too much but yeah. um yeah I kind of thought about like why I wanted to do that and um yeah tested out this wig my friend had a few times <laughs> and yeah um but yeah I guess I look very different in all my videos and it's sort of like it's just um been something that's really fun to experiment with also because when I was a teenager I went through a period of looking very different to how I do now and then radically changing like shaving off all my hair after having really long hair and so I like playing with that sort of right. stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So videos play a big part uh, yeah. in in your the whole music journey per se, which it, it, it should it should go hand in hand because of the person you are. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, you know, like who who is your audience, and and are you picking up international um, followers <laughs> with people? Because you know YouTube now the world sees it, don't they? Yeah. Like this interview will be available on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found, I guess, that I reckon I've reached, you know, the people that um, are most likely to get my music and stuff, mainly through playing shows, honestly, I think for me. Um, it's different for everyone depending on what kind of music you're making, but I've found it's been when I have opened for artists that are like bigger like myself in yeah. a way like and and you've you know like i mentioned in the opener that you've you know like i've supported some big artists you know like name a couple of them so yeah like grimes um who i mentioned earlier yeah. was a big inspiration for me initially and alice glass uh, um also like tegan and sarah and sarah which Blasco. that's a cool 
yeah, yeah. They're, they're all really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, I got really lucky, I think, in getting paired with a lot of um, these artists before COVID um, that were sort of really in line with um, who I am and what I'm doing as well. And so I think a lot of my audience has come from me, yeah, being the opener at shows like that. Um, more recently, because, you know, I haven't been able to play on bills with international artists for a couple of years. Um, I'd say I've I've gotten into DJing in, a lot in the last okay. like, two years because a lot of my the friends I have in this sort of circle in Melbourne are, um, are DJs and um, yeah I kind of really connected with like club culture for the first time a few years ago and realised I have like this intense love for dance music and um, so I taught myself to DJ last year when I moved here um, and I feel like I've been kind of building a different kind of like audience that's related to that because I I also, as well as making pop songs, I've started making like techno influence tracks as Whoa. well and trying to make, I've made an album that sort of blends the two as much as I can and stuff and like, or like alternates from electronic pop Is songs to Is this the, the new one coming out So Not so much the new one actually, oh, right. yep. um, but like my, the one prior yeah. uh, to Breathe Underwater, I kind of did that a bit and I first started experimenting experimenting with it in my debut album, Swallow Me Whole. Um, as I kind of got to this age where I was going clubbing, it just started to influence what I did. Um, and so, yeah, I'd say the people that are into my music right now, most are kind of in this underground dance music, mm. queer dance music scene in right. Melbourne and Sydney. So when you're DJing, do you often play your own music? Um, well, so I guess I'd say I have like 70% 70, 70 of my tracks that I make are more like pop and slower tempo and they're like 30% are like actual like <laughs> techno tracks that you could play in a DJ set. And so I guess recently I, I it's like I might end the set with like one of my own techno tracks. But then like recently I, I have this like um, very, very pop song I put out a couple of months ago called Always Wanting and it's like quite hyper pop inspired. Um, so for DJ sets I like speed it up um, so that the pitch of it gets higher <laughs> and it's this really like um, fast high pitched track that kind of I can work in to the to the techno and stuff around it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And how do re uh, the uh, you know, the crowd uh, react to it? You know, like are, are you watching more carefully because it's yeah. your your track? Yeah. There's this one I made last year um, that's sort of like the, the hardest techno track I've ever made kind of thing. and. I played that for the first time to anyone, like in a te uh, in a DJ set, and um, at the very end, and everyone kind of really loved it just because it was really kind of intense and like Excellent. distorted and full on, and it, it was like fun doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do you, you know, like when when people say, "Oh, I like that track," or or you know, even if you if they don't comment on it, do you actually tell friends that are there that was my track? Yeah, do you actually do that? I tell friends, you know, I'm sort of like when I first played that track, I was like, hey, can you be there at the end? <laughs> like, I'm going to play my, this track at the end kind of thing. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's important. You, you, hey, you know, like we've got to self promote ourselves. You, know? <laughs> you do. So you should say, hey, this is one of my tracks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, also, it's sort of, I think a lot of people in the kind of, you know, the friend group and then the extended kind of community around my friend group. Um, would know like when I played that track, it has my voice in it and people know what my voice sounds like. Right. And all the tracks prior don't have vocals kind of thing. And so yeah. they were like, oh, yeah, <laughs> so that helps. Yeah. <laughs> or I, I've sung along whilst DJing actually, which is not oh. how I perform live normally, but like I did do a DJ set where I played that track and just yeah. pulled out a mic for that one song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but that, that's happening more and more as well, isn't it? You yeah. Know, like, and, and, but the, an audience would love that. Yeah, it, it did go down well, I did that, yeah. yeah. So what can we expect with this new album? What, what direction are you going? Because you said that the last album was a, you know, like a bit different to what this one's going to be like. Yeah, this, this album is um, the most pop kind of I've ever been, I'd say. Okay. Like, um, there, there's a, yeah, this techno track I've been talking about, Control, that's sort of very heavy, it sits in it as well at the start. So it's a, it kind of... Mood wise, really kind of ping, pings around, <laughs> but um, overall, it's just I'd say 
much, much, much more like pop inspired than anything I've ever made. Right. Um, I've yeah, I've been really getting into like hyper pop inspired stuff. Like I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Sophie. Yep. Who passed away. Like she was sort of a really big inspiration for me. And like, okay. After she passed away last year, I kind of like reconnected with all her tracks again, and um, I was thinking a lot about her like influence as an artist and on the culture around music and the way things are produced and I really like looked into how exactly she did produce her music and I downloaded the software she used. Oh wow. Yeah. And so this album is mostly um, made through Sterum, which is this software where you can kind of make sounds from scratch. Yeah. Um, so all the drums and stuff I've been making from scratch in it. So it's very like a lot more futuristic kind of electronic sounding stuff I've done, but also very, very, very pop. Right. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. uh, and you're making a video for it in this theatre uh, as well. Yes. And is that the techno track or is it one of, one of the no, other? No, it's a, it's a very pop track. Okay. Yeah. What What's it called? It's called um, My Ribs Are Tired is the name of that song that we're shooting in the theatre. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, all the very best um, for, for this new album. And I uh, can't wait to hear it because I'm loving what you're doing. <laughs> Love Thank the you. video, so oh, you know awesome. this video that you're making here. I can't wait, wait to see it. Cool. So congratulations on your wonderful career already. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. I'm David Hunt. You've been watching the Art Hunter, and we'll be back again next week. See ya.